Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, super red day, and I'm not going to lie, a little bit tough, but there are some pieces of information to glean from what is going on. And we're going to take a look at uh, potentially what could have caused this domino effect, China getting into the fray yet again. And uh, we're going to see how it's a polar opposite to what is going on in the United States as the U.S. seems to be embracing things on certain bank levels and also on larger bank levels, such as Wells Fargo, as this article just came out. We're going to take a look at just uh, some musings that I think uh, about uh, what is going on in the market itself, uh, the history of um, different aspects of uh, the Internet and how it relates to today and how things actually have rebounded quite nicely. And then finally, we'll take a look at uh, corrections, just how bad uh, they can get. So we'll take a look at all that. Uh, but first, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, this awesome market and see exactly where we're at. I'm not here to blow sunshine. I, uh, I'm here to be honest with you and here to tell you straight. And right now, not a great day. Let's just be honest. This is probably, uh, I think, one of the biggest dips probably I've seen in, in quite some time. We were just at almost $1.5 trillion. Now we're at 1.46. It's been fluctuating 1.36, 1.37. We lost about a trillion dollars in what, two, three weeks? <laughs> trillion. So here we are. And uh, it sounds awful. And it is awful. Let's just be honest. And the reason why I uh, titled this You Should Sell is because if this is too much for, for you and what you're doing, you probably should sell. Now, that is not financial advice. It is financial opinion. Uh, for me personally, if I couldn't handle it, then I would be out of, uh, of crypto because it is so volatile. And, um, you know, there's also another issue that has come up, which is, you know, people talk about, ah, well, you know, this is totally different because of institutions and blah, 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 and it's going to stabilize. Stop. Stop. As long as there is greed and there is people who want to manipulate the markets and there are whales, it will never be this. It will never be different. It will always be the same. And this is just proof of that. So, uh, again, this is too much, and uh, you think you should have sold? You should sell. Here's what we got. And I'm going to just show you what I'm going to do. And, of course, your goals are not my goals. You're free to do whatever you want to. But I'll tell you today, still buying uh, if I can get the darn apps to work. So we'll first talk about this. The market cap is $1.46 trillion, And let's just do this for a little bit of, uh, of hindsight uh, later on when we move forward. I think in uh, September, October, November, much different. But... Bitcoin today is at uh, below 34,000. I think it slipped all the way to 32, and who knows, it can go to 28. Uh, that's what some of the TA people are saying, and uh, I can see that definitely, 28. The real question is, you and all your friends, or just me and all my friends, let's say that. Uh, I can tell you that everybody talks a great game about, oh, you know, when it goes down, I'm going to buy. But how many of those people actually do buy? And that really comes down to it. Uh, are you one of those people or are you not one of those people? And again, that probably comes down to this whole thing of you should sell. If, uh, if dips aren't your thing, then it's just not in the cards. And uh, again, not here for sunshine and everything else. I'm just going to show you what we got. So Ethereum, uh, well below the high of 4000 $2,300. Binance coin, I mean, let's just look at the percentage. Wow, 34% in 24 hours, 33, 30, 37 for Polkadot, 41% for Bitcoin Cash, almost half. Wow, that's a lot. 20%, anything massive, 42% for VeChain. It's bad and it'll probably get worse. It's just the, that's just the truth. So let's just break into what's, uh, what's going on. So China, everybody's favorite country to not be a fan of, <clears throat> comes out and says, hey, uh, looks like we're going to crack down on crypto. This is what's going on. And you probably heard about this story. And I think since the market's open, not the markets, but I, I think this has really set in and people have really formulated the plan. I think there's a lot of things uh, going on in play over there. Could be that, could be Elon Musk and his tweets, but that didn't really, really do too much. This is the real uh, new thing. Also, you have to understand that uh, whales behind what's going on, they could just use this to dump like crazy and just be like, you know, we'll just hide it with that. And that's going to be what it is. Who knows? This is what's going on for sure. Chinese regulators have tightened restrictions that ban financial institutions and payment companies from providing services related to crypto, marking a fresh crackdown on digital coins. Fantastic. Many of the new rules expand on previous restrictions aimed at crypto and close loopholes. This is the big thing. They close the loopholes where people are actually able to uh, transfer 
to actually pay crypto to, or you know tr uh, trade between crypto to crypto and they were doing that in china and they're trying to close that down uh, let's see this is going to include banks and online payment firms uh, not to offer clients any services involving crypto such as currency exchanges registration trading clearing and settlement so they're not going to be able to like trade Bitcoin for Ethereum or VeChain for tomato coin, whatever else. That's done. And uh, they're going to try to crack down as much as possible. Can they do it? Well, they're China, and they can do a lot of different things that uh, different countries can't. So uh, we'll see. Institutions uh, were prohibited from providing crypto savings, trust, or pledging services and issuing financial products related to crypto. Crypto-related information services, insurance, and derivatives tradings are also banned. So pretty much as much as they can get. Uh, their hands on and to stop that's what they say they're closing the loopholes firms were also urged to step up monitoring of money flows involved in crypto trading remember it is china so that's what they want to do china banking system does not accept crypto or provide relevant services and then to finish up tuesday's industry directive warned speculative bitcoin trading has had rebounded infringing the safety of people's property and disrupting the normal economic and financial order. So again, this is the uh, China coming down and saying, you know what, we're not going to allow this to, to keep happening, and we don't want people's safety to get involved. So that's why they're like trying to get it. That's just one of the reasons why they're saying it. But I personally believe it's because the digital yuan is coming out, and the country wants to maintain control over all of its citizens in every way, shape, and form. So how do you do that? Monetary policy. And just going, hey, you, these cryptocurrencies, we're not going to let you do that. And we're going to do this. And that, off you go. Many Chinese investors are now trading on platforms owned by Chinese exchanges that had relocated overseas, including Huobi and OKX. As over-the-counter market for crypto has become busy again, while once dormant trading chat rooms on social media have revived. And that was one of their issues. They're like, well, if all these things are going to revive, we got to shut these down. And that's what they're doing. Fresh crackdown makes it difficult for individuals to buy crypto using all these different payment platforms and could impact miners' business by making it harder for them to exchange crypto for yuan. And that is interesting to me. So as we talk about how everything, people will always talk about, ah, you know, Bitcoin and the mining, there's so many different uh, uh, mining operations and it's like 60 or whatever percent it is that's uh, mined in China. Well, guess what? If you're mining Bitcoin in China, and that's what you're using to actual fund your operation, what do you do now? Because you can't sell it and you're in China. So you're going to shut down. These are interesting times. And this is a this is a pretty big. So let me just think about that piece. But it's just it's just odd how one government is like, we're totally going away from this because we need to control it. As opposed to the US government, which I thought was falling behind. It's like, no, this was an article we covered a couple weeks back. Hundreds of U.S. banks to allow holding and trading Bitcoin. And this was all perpetrated or perpetrated, uh, perpetuated by NYDIG. And they were trying to bring these banking institutions into the fold to go, look, we need someone to hold Bitcoin, trade Bitcoin, and allow your customers to use cryptocurrency, not just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency as their assets because we want to help you guys thrive in the new economy. They're like, let's do it. That is what it's all about as far as innovation. So you see the dichotomy here between a communist China nation, and then just going over here to go on, you know what, to America, I'm like, let's, let's go forward, let's go full tilt. Who's gonna win that battle? Interesting to think. I am glad I'm in this country, I can just tell you that. And this is actually new. Uh, this was just put out today, about a couple hours ago. Uh, Wells Fargo becomes the latest banking giant to make foray into crypto. And it's going to add its own crypto strategy for wealthy clients by mid-June. And, you know, once that starts, they're going to roll it down to the not-so-rich because they want to bring people in who are uh, institutional investors or accredited investors so they can take more of the risk because it's a risky proposition, as we see today. Girl Darrell Crunk, the president of Wells Fargo Investment Institute, claims that the uh, bank now views crypto as a viable investment asset. We think crypto space has just kind of hit an evolution and maturation of its development that allows it now to be a viable investment asset. And they're in the final stage of doing due diligence. So this is going to drop in about a month and a half, probably about a month, yeah, a month, month and a half, because today's May 19th, and uh, June's just around the corner. So, hey, uh, if, before I get into this next piece, 
as the market starts to, 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 cr to crash, people say it's a dip and it's a retracement. No, no. That's more of a, uh, of a little bit of a crash. Let's just be honest. I don't care what you want to call it. It is what it is. So, I mean, when you see something, when you see a trillion dollars in a couple of weeks, that's not just a slight pullback. That is big. And uh, again, not here to sugarcoat it, but uh, as I talk about things, I think this is where millionaires are made, quite honestly. And this is where I want to do most of my buying. I know it's a weird thing to switch your brain, but I think that's how it is. And I, just, I wrote this in Twitter. I said, hey, you're not a victim of circumstance. If today's dip makes you uncomfortable, you got to think for yourself, how can I make this work for me? We have never, ever had a dip that did not rebound. And don't tell me that you think that Bitcoin's going to zero. It's not going to zero. Crypto isn't going to zero. It's not going to be like uh, this huge, major, major crash where everything goes to like Bitcoin to 500 bucks or something like that. It's just not going to happen. There are too many big players in the game, too many institutions getting involved for them to really uh, rewind time. We knew China was going to do this. We knew China was going to be and go down this route. I'm just surprised it took them this long to, to say what it is. So I don't think that uh, this will actually go away. I think there's, again, too many people coming in. And these are the days that make millionaires. So again, take a look at everybody involved. If you got like a Wells Fargo, if you got a mass mutual, if you got a Liberty uh, mutual uh, insurance company and all these different banks and big institutions coming in, do you think they're just going to be like, we're okay. I think this is just a bump in the road and that's really what it comes down to. And then I'll say, I'll say this. When people were telling me all day long that these institutions, I said, oh, it's different, Rob. You don't understand. It's different because the institutions... The institutions are going to make everything great. They're going to stabilize the price of Bitcoin and altcoins as well. And you just don't understand. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. Sorry to tell you this. And uh, I think that's why people are selling so much right now, because they were disillusioned by the fact that, that all these institutions would save them and it would be just not a big deal. But it is a big deal. And uh, at some point, they are going to actually sell a little bit. I still think Tesla sold. I know they said that they didn't, but we'll see in the next earnings call. And that's just what it is. So uh, this is really where the rubber meets the road. Maybe you should sell if you think that this is going to zero and it makes you uncomfortable. Um, I'd like to say it's not financial advice, but uh, for me, I mean, it is what it is. That's all I'll tell you. For me, I'm not selling. I'm actually buying. As soon as the apps come up, I just tried Coinbase, totally down. I just tried Gemini, down. I just tried Voyager, down. Everything's down today, and that's really what it comes down to. <laughs> down to. So let me, uh, let me blow this up so you can see it. Oh, another one. So here's just a prime example of what I'm talking about. This was a newspaper article from quite a long time ago. This thing's called newspapers. And it talks about internet may be just a passing, a passing fad as millions give up on it. What I really like about this is it kind of shows you that uh, the internet back in the day, if you're old enough to remember when it actually came about, was really just that, just a bunch of nerds sitting around and going, this is the future, this is the future. And I was like, <laughs> okay, sure. And uh, people just missed the boat on it. Then all that, uh, that dot com, uh, the companies came in and then it was a big crash because everything kind of got uh, uh, filtered out. And then there was a big um, resurgence, and here we are. So if you take a look at what's going on uh, back then to what is going now, it's the same thing. History just continues to repeat itself. And it's the people that I can tell you right now, a lot of people would wish they could go back and invest into Google and hold it. Wish they could go back and invest in Amazon, wish they could hold it. Wish that they could go back and invest in Facebook or PayPal, and they could just hold it because they would be so much better off. So again, like when, when people are, are, are talking about, you know, like, you know, you should sell and, and everything, like I just say, like, you should sell. For me personally, I think it'd be the dumbest thing I could possibly do right now is to sell with what's going on. I just, I'm not in the business of losing money. And I just think that it would be a travesty when I look at something like this, or when I look at something like, uh, like this, let me blow this up as well so you can see it. This was a nice little article. <laughs> which talks about Jeff Bezos when he gave a presentation at uh, Harvard Business School. And they just said, hey, you seem like a really nice guy, so don't take it wrong, but you really need to sell the Barnes & Noble and get out now because it's a worthless uh, business. And Jeff Bezos was like, 
okay, kid, well, I'm just going to keep doing what I do because I think Amazon's going to be huge because I have a vision for it. And then, of course, what happened to that vision? Well, <laughs> Amazon lost more than 90% of its price and it went down to almost nothing. And you were stupid for holding Amazon at that time. But guess what happens? It rebounds and it's in the top. It's like the, one of the five companies that, that makes up the top 20% or the top 20%, yeah, of uh, the S&P 500. Microsoft, Apple, Google, um, Facebook, and uh, whatever, Apple. So, I mean, right now, if you take a look at that, well, seems like kind of uh, legit, but as time goes on, again, I'm not selling. I don't see the point. And actually, I wish I could have gone back in time and bought Amazon when it was 90% off as far as a discount. And finally, well, two things finally. First of all, no one ever goes broke taking profits. And I remember when I sold a little bit of my Ethereum, because I said that was my plan. My plan all, all along was to hit these price points, dollar cost average in, wait till it goes up, dollar cost average out. And people are like, you're an idiot. Why would you sell anything? Because the price is going to go so much. Because of days like this. Because of days like this, because we never know what's going to happen. So you should have a plan in place. But I'm never going to sell all of it. And I didn't even sell that much to begin with. But in all honesty... I mean, the majority, I still holding on to the majority of it. And it's it, because it's things like this where I see as a refresher in my mind as far as history about what went on. Let me blow this up as well. And this make it even better. So when we take a look at this, the dips, the resets, all those things, you're looking at an average of 30 to 40%. This is in 2017 when things really were taking off. And you can see like right here, uh, what is this, right before April, you saw a big dip of th almost 30%. And then look at this one, 40% right around the same time uh, from uh, June to the middle of July. And then it, it went up massively. And then another big dip of another 40% that came down. Then a big up then down to 30% and so on and so forth. So. We know that this market is extremely volatile. So why does it shock anybody when we have like this much of a, of a, of a, of a pullback? It's already priced in. I'm not pricing. It's already been in the history. We know it's going to happen. We know China. I, not really, I knew China was going to pull this, and they should have pulled it a long time ago and said, we're not going to do this because we want to do the digital you want. I mean, people held out hopes, but it's not happening. They go, they, they're going one way. America and the rest of the world is going another way. And I personally believe the country, the entity, the institutions, whoever it is uh, that controls two things will control the world, artificial intelligence and blockchain. Those two things are the key to the next industrial revolution. And those are just my two cents. So again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, uh, but if this frightens you and it shouldn't be there, then uh, you, know, you need to take a look at it. But if you take a look at the history, and you see where things were, things see things how they actually came about, and the actual future that we can potentially have. There's another another choice out there. I am not here to make that choice for you. It's up to you to make that choice and do your own research. And just remember that all the stuff I talk about, it's not investment advice, it's investment opinion. Me personally, <laughs> for the long haul. And I think it's right place, right time. Now, if the apps work, I'll probably buy some more crypto today. And that's it. So look, that's all I want to talk to you about today. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, found a little value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. We do a lot of different things about uh, news and whatnot on this channel. And then over on uh, D News Clips or Digital Asset News Clips, we talk more of the advanced things and talk about more about projects. So check that out. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.